Hi, my name is Holly Herndon, and I'm going to talk about Spim and Allium by Talus. So this is a kind of unusual piece, even for today, in that it's written for 40 voices, eight choirs of five different parts, um, so soprano, alto, tenor, baritone, and bass. We don't really know exactly how it was originally performed, but people speculate that it was performed in kind of like a U shape around the space. And it would kind of start with one choir with this one voice, and then it would kind of spread, and then everybody sings together, and then it kind of moves around the space, and this, the other choirs pick it up. And so it's this kind of like early multi-channel surround experience, but using like human, human physical technology instead of using some sort of crazy like speaker system. That must have been like such a wild trip in like 1570 for somebody to be like, okay, I'm gonna have this surround kind of choral experience. I think a machine learning algorithm could write this now. If this was the canon, then a, a machine learning tool could emulate something similar. And that's why you can't take music out of context. We are really obsessed with kind of like past canon and then training on it and then repeating it. That's not what's beautiful about music and musical expression. It's about um, responding to your place and time in your environment and your own personal expression of that. You know, of course I don't wish that I had written this piece because I don't, I'm glad I wasn't alive in 1570. Like that would have been awful. And if I had written this, they probably would have like burned me at the stake and like called me a witch or something like that. I think I apply some early vocal polyphony techniques to, to what I'm doing. There's almost like a simplicity in uh, modal music of, of that time. And then things get way more maximal. And you know, I, of course, like have tons of layers in my music and I also get quite maximal. But then it, like, it goes back um, you know, like minimalism in the 60s and it's almost like history kind of folds in on itself and like kind of goes back to that. And then there's this like big bag of like maximalism in the middle. And so I like those kind of like bookends that find each other again. I think maybe this one is really important to people because it, it is pretty adventuresome in terms of its performance. There's this weirdo in like 1570 who's like ex actually experimenting, but within very kind of like rigid frameworks, you know, it's like he has like the queen and the church and all of these pressures. So he's like, you know, what, what are the parameters that I'm able to kind of mess with? Um, and I think maybe it's just the beauty of that, of that kind of like experimentation that people always come back to. I mean, I think it's undeniably like a moving piece of music. Yeah, like it makes the hair stand up on your, on your arms. <laughs>